Good morning everyone, this is Diane. It's Saturday as I'm filming this. It's a very cold day today, but I am warm in the house for now. I have to go out in a little bit. But first, I wanted to take the time to finish these journals up. I sewed them together last night and I, this morning, spent time doing the finishing touches like looking for a piece of jewelry for the front um, and finishing up adding some things inside and putting a pocket on the back cover. So I got all that done and I think, I think they're done. So we're going to go through these. This is uh, the one I'm keeping and I just wanted to let you see the cover. Well, I, I'll go through it quickly, but I'll save this one for last. I love the blues and the pinks. That's why I um, kept this one. And although I'm not that fond of bugs and bees, I do like this bee pin because of the pink and the blue to go with this cover. And I had to snip off a kind of a heavy little metal loop on the back, but I did it uh, with my, whatever these are called. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's glued on with um, crystal effects. Is that what it's called? Glossy accents. And there's the back cover. So we'll go through this in a little bit. And this one is reserved. And there's a little pin. And I had to snip. Oh, it was an earring. I had to snip the back of that off. And we'll go through that one. But first we'll go through this one. Because this is the one that's available in my shop. It will be there. Um, let's see, you'll see this video on Sunday, February 4th. Yeah, February 4th. No, 5th. Today's the 4th. Um, and it will, I will list it at 6 p.m. That seems to be a good time. So I'll list it at 6 p.m. in my shop or right around there, as close as I can do. I, I'm doing pretty good at getting it in there right on time, but you never know with me. So let's just look at it. I'm calling it a shabby chic slash boho journal because it's pretty much what it is. The coloring is shabby chic. A lot of the images, the florals are shabby chic, but it has some boho elements like this. And this is a vintage sheet. And I just uh, did a video showing collaging this with fabrics and vintage and antique laces, this little vintage applique little piece of velvet ribbon. This is antique lace. I didn't have a piece of vintage jewelry that I liked for this cover, so I found this piece. It's new, but it's pretty on there. I tied it with a piece of pink sari silk. Inside is some dyed paper that I dyed with a little doily imprint on it from a plastic doily and a postcard from 1909 it has the 1910 calendar printed on it. And behind that, it's a little pocket, and behind it is um, this sheet from a vintage uh, radio operator, like a ham radio operator, his little log book, and this 1948 letter written in Dutch on um, the airmail paper, the thin rice paper. And it's, there's a lot. I'd have a hard time reading that even if it was in English. And so I can't read it at all in Dutch. This is coffee dyed scrapbook paper and I uh, ruffled up this kind of a silkyish fabric piece. I cut off a, a bigger piece and added this little tag that was stamped. It's on a bulb pin. And this is from the 1870s. And I talked about that in one of the videos where we were decorating. I think yesterday's video. Saturday's video while we were decorating pages. I did some stamping. And this page is from a book about antiques past and present. And this was a glassware page. Here is a digital from Amity Bloom. And I added this Vintage uh, Valentine. This is either from the 20s or the 30s. And it's double-sided. You get a beautiful image on each side. And then to Ellen Lane from Richard Bullock. Isn't that charming? And it's in really good shape. I did some stenciling on that side of the page. And 
There are quite a few vintage and antique elements in these books. Here is the gorgeous embroidered sheer trim that I added on and I sewed right here so that it would be two pockets. And I tucked in some vintage photographs. And this is a card for the Horseless Carriage Club from 1951. It's a membership card. thought that was something fun to add. And then this cute little um, 25 cent premium coupon, redeemable at our store uh, for beautiful dinnerware, 1949. Here I just added a strip of leftover dyed paper from another project and this that I just got and I talked about that in yesterday's video on this roll. It's vintage and this little vintage gift tag. This is another coffee dyed scrapbook paper and I just clipped to it some vintage pieces. This is from a bank in 19 from 1944 and this is a receipt for Jacob Biles from 1888. This was in the same collection of items as this. I got a lot of Jacob Biles um, receipts and things like that in a really fun bundle a few years ago at a flea market. This is from a digital from uh, Lorna Taylor at Taylor Made Journals and I just tore this little piece out. It's a digital kit called French Roast and I keep, I don't look up the name of it <laughs> but there's a lot of pages to this I've shown them in the previous videos and this is a vintage sticker a vintage postcard of Minnehaha Falls in Watkins Glen New York which is a little over an hour from me and I walked to the gorge years ago with my family and my husband's family were visiting and we all went up there and walked the gorge and it was tough <laughs> but we did it uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of steps you see the steps there there's a lot um, and there is a digital and this is uh, yesterday I knew who it was So I'm just going to clip these back on. If I forget to link some of the digitals that I talk about, they're linked in yesterday's video. Here's a digital, uh, one of Lorna Taylor's wallpapers, and I added, and that's from Taylor Made Journals, T-A-Y-L-O-R, and uh, this sheer embroidered piece and a vintage trim that's just gorgeous with the ribbon. And this applique was part of it, and it looks just like the little applique I added. Where did I add an applique? I showed you one, didn't I? I don't see, oh, that was on, it's on a different book. Anyway. Nope, it's on this book. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it looks pretty much the same. But this was in a baggie of all separate. This was already attached to that ribbon. Got them in separate places. This is stenciling. Coffee dyed scrapbook paper. Another page from a collectibles book. And this is about paper dolls, I believe. Nancy Fancy box cover. And then one of the dresses. Cute. Here's another vintage receipt. This is from Corning, New York, J.B. Maltby, and it was in 1913, just on a plain coffee dyed paper. And on this side is another one of those cards. Here is a coffee dyed paper with a um, scrap of fabric and a vintage trim and this tag this is a 
This is a vintage envelope. Red turkey wheat flour. I think that is so cool. I had enough to put one in each journal and I still have a couple left. I put it backwards. I wanted this to be on this side so I added um, a vellum sticker here just so you'd have something pretty to look at. You can see that the top of the envelope was torn right off but I left it the way it is. There's just a little bit of the of the flap left. I just left it there. This is a vintage, um, it's a check that I have in my collection that I made a copy of so it's not fragile and I could use it as a pocket. It's from 1885 and this is from the Biles family also. And we made this tag in one of the ephemera making sessions for these journals. A little bit of spangled ribbon I used as a trim, as a tab. These two stamps are from Sam Poole. You can look for Sam Poole, P-O-O-L-E, on Amazon for her stamps, and you can find them there. I love this. Another Sam Poole stamp. This was just a little pleated sheer something, trim or something, and I just kind of puckered it up and sewed it there. And this little piece here is one of the Amity Bloom Wallpaper Border Digitals, and I added an antique um, Victorian calling card that is in excellent condition. And it has the name under there. I don't want to pull it up because it looks like it hasn't been messed with much at all. A lot of times they are bent here where they've been lifted up or even um, broken off. I put it in so that the loose end is here so that it doesn't get stuck here and break. And this is one of the pieces that we made in one of the videos. There's another little strip of that craft colored measuring ribbon. Um, here I glued this little vintage gift tag on and you can write in there. I just put the clip on it to hold it down because it wants to pop open. On this side we have a vintage receipt for butter, eggs, and poultry in Boyertown, Pennsylvania from the 1940s. I did look up Boyertown and it apparently it doesn't have anything to do with the Boyer Candy Company, but Boyer Candy Company is, is located in Allentown, Pennsylvania. But I read about the candy company and I and I looked that up and neither of them say anything about well, the candy company of course talks about mallow cups but this doesn't talk about the candy company so apparently they're not related and the candy company was started in New York somewhere and then moved to Allentown anyway that was just a little bit of trivia for you this is a vintage seal and I punched out the yellow piece to add behind it I mentioned it yesterday when I was using these receipts I wondered if it was where mallow cups were made this is a tailor-made journal stamp. They are not in her shop. She makes them, makes the stamps, and then when they're gone, they're gone. She doesn't, they're just a limited edition stamp. And I love the ones that I have. This is a little piece of vintage lace and a coupon uh, that I cut. It was a stamp from Sam Poole. Sorry, Silk, and another pretty stamp. And then on the back is one of the pockets that we made in a video. There's a digital tag from, I'm gonna try to pronounce the shop. Uh, it's, the sh it's the shop that I always say I can't pronounce it, but I think it's Eralamija or something like that. But I just thought that was really pretty and went with the shabby chic. And here is another vintage Valentine. We got one, right? Yeah, we had the one that was looped over the page. And then here's, every book got two little Valentines. And this one has two pictures also. To Ellen from Claire.
and then I just made this pocket real quick this morning made the same way as this except I just glued that cute little image on there and this is a tag that was in my stash a collaged I think I cut it from a master board that I made and I just stapled little scraps of fabric to the top so this is the one that will be in my shop at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time I forgot to mention that at the beginning uh, Sunday the day you see this video uh, February 5th so I'm just going to go very quickly through the other two there are differences in them they have the same layout but of course the materials used are different and the Valentines are different it has the same things in the pocket but I added this little spare piece of lace that was floating around on my table to the edge there this one has a pink sheer ruffle it came off of a, a sari I believe uh, somebody sent me a bunch of cut up sari pieces and it's got some embroidery there Every journal got this same trim and different photos, of course. This receipt is from 1960. Same little coupon. Looks like she's peeling something from the garden. Another little vintage gift tag. I love them. This receipt is from the Scranton Life Insurance Company 1943 uh, the year after I got the Biles materials I got the Trail family materials with all of their papers and receipts so those were quite the scores Niagara Falls That's a digital from Taylor Made Journals wallpaper. She has a lot of wallpaper digital sets. This envelope required some repair. It had tears. So I added that little strip and here I added a whole chunk that you can write on. You can see it was torn up pretty badly. Another digital check. This one has a little wedding card, uh, wedding gift enclosure card. German text there from an old, old, old book. This has metal on it. I just didn't want to cut off the prettiest part of the paper. Um, why didn't I cut off the other end? I don't remember. But I just left it as a flap. So I added that little card. And this one has an antique calling card also and this little card that we made. I finally got that sticker peeled. Got the backing peeled off it. If you watched that video, you saw I gave up on it during the video. This is a little gift enclosure card that opens up fully like that.
Here's the second Valentine for this journal. And another tag that was in my sash. I just added the fabric to the top, put my signature on the bottom. This is uh, a lady that I have the original piece of that and I scanned these pieces. Um, I don't know if they're part of the digitals that I have. They may be, but this was printed and in my stash, so I just cut off as much as I needed to cut off to make her fit on that pocket. And then we'll go quickly through mine. I wanted the blue and, you know, like the turquoise and pink combination. And I thought this was perfect with the colors. And it is written in, I think it's Russian, because I think the back of it, well actually I didn't want, I really didn't want to cover the back of it, but I wanted to glue it down there, so I printed the back. And it just looks like Cyrillic right there. So I'm thinking it's Russian or Eastern European. This says North America. But I can't make out where it's from. M A N N oh, M A N something S. I don't know. This came from a vintage baby doll dress or nightgown or something. It was the bottom of it with the lace at the bottom. Here's my Valentine. Some photos in here. I didn't add the extra things in this pocket yet. This has a vintage check. Niagara Falls. I chose this postcard because I love Niagara Falls and I liked the pink and the blue colors with this journal. One of Lorna's wallpapers. I love that. I did put fabric down the center of each envelope so that they wouldn't tear being stitched. And I had to tape this. I used a piece of a real vintage cellophane tape there. And a printable check. Again with the pink and the turquoise from the Garden of Friendly Wishes. Isn't that neat? Sometimes I feel like I just have to use some of the some of my favorite pieces in something that I will keep and it makes me feel more free to use pieces in journals that I sell. Does that make sense? This one was uh, the front of a calling card that broke off. So I just glued it there. And a digital tag. And this is a real vintage um, advertising card. 
antique advertising card. Bonbons and chocolates, appropriate for a journal that has Valentine's in it. And this, this has been in my stash for a little while, but this is printed, copied from a very, very, very old bookmark. Well, it's in my lifetime, but I had this bookmark that I think I bought at a museum store or something. And I don't even remember where, but my kids were still at home. They were like in grade school or middle school when I got this. And they're in their 40s now. And I loved that bookmark so much. I don't know the artist. If you know the artist, please let me know. But you can see all the bends in it because I kept it for a long time and it was in rough shape. And then I ended up laminating it and gluing it to the front of a composition book. And when I got rid of the composition book, I peeled that off. And I did end up um, getting rid of the bookmark, but I made a copy of it first and made this tag. And it was in my stash. And I thought, why is that in my stash? That should be in one of my books. So now it is. <laughs> that was a long-winded description of that tag. So I had so much fun working on these. I love it when I make a journal where I, I pull out a whole bunch of vintage ephemera and add it. And just kind of doesn't really have a theme, but it has a definite style. So they're, I'm not considering them Valentine journals. They just contain a couple of Valentines. So they're just pretty, shabby chic, boho journals and I love them and I hope you love them. So at six o'clock this evening you can go to the shop and see if this is still available. Thank you so much for watching. Please tell me what you think of these journals and please subscribe to my channel and um, I will see you in the next video. Have a creative day today. Bye bye.